Uh, Pat Patterson doesn't like me. Pat doesn't like you? No, not at all. Okay. You know, like since I was 15, I've been in this business. And uh, when you're young in this business, it can be very difficult. Were you forced to? No, no, my fuck that. No. It's just. Uh, it's a hard business. You see it go on all the time. Uh, coming out of the shower, uh, and there's your booker standing there uh, staring at your midsection with that goofy look on his face, making groans and licking his lips. Billy Jack Haynes wrestled with the WWF for two years. He says sexual harassment of wrestlers is widespread. Put it this way, if you dropped your soap in the shower, you look both ways ahead and behind you before you picked it up. These promoters, too, they prey on the dreams of young men. You know, that dream of becoming uh, a top star. At World Wrestling Federation headquarters in Stamford, Connecticut this morning, McMahon acknowledged that two wrestling executives have resigned amid the charges. But he says none of those charges are in fact true. We have been undergoing an investigation. Our investigation shows us that, again, if anything, there could very well have been some locker room horseplay. There was never anything, to our knowledge, that approached anything illegal or immoral. We don't tolerate that here in the World Wrestling Federation. And JBL grabs Christian's firm buttocks Ugh. and rubs up and down and up and down and up and down. This is actually a true story, by the way. And up and down and up and down <laughs> just to let him know that JBL is a huge dick. <laughs> nice. Now, this is actually a quote from Edge. <laughs> Bradshaw soaped my ass in the shower. Was it Edge, not Christian? This is what I'm oh, reading. What I I'm just, re did I just mess up the sexy story? What I'm reading is Edge. But Brash wrestling tycoon is accused of using his muscles to cover up the sexual corruption of his top executives and even participating in it himself. But accusations of sordid seduction and sexual harassment have the big top falling down on the ringleaders. Now stepping forward, a lot of men saying that there's a good deal of gay sex abuse underway in the world of wrestling, and everybody all these years has been scared to step forward. Now come forward a number of people to say, because I wouldn't have sex, with another guy in the game, I couldn't get promoted. Against him and his organization have threatened McMahon's empire. The most serious were raised by former ring boy Tom Cole. He says the top WWF executives sexually harassed and abused ring boys. The teenagers hired to put up and take down rings at matches. One story in Allentown was that uh, when uh, this, you mentioned this Mal Phillips, uh, I, I was told that when he was caught with a young boy in a car, they talked to this young boy and said, why? Why, do, why, why are you allowing this? And he says, well, he says, I get to go to all the TV tapings here in Allentown or Hamburg, both, both, for free. I get to meet a lot of the wrestlers they introduced me to and even take pictures with a lot of them. You know, that's why. Phillips was in charge of hiring ring crews. He allegedly lured boys as young as 12 or 13 with promises they couldn't resist. So McMahon has gone on record saying that he wasn't aware of any child sex abuse. We have learned that he fired Phil a few years ago because he suspected these activities. He then hired him back. And some guys are saying, I lost my job because I wouldn't do this to this uh, guy who was a, a higher, more powerful than me on the ladder. And before you think this is trivial, first of all, let's understand that a couple of these uh, charges involve kids, 14 years old juveniles you go to jail for a long time if you're involved with sex of any kind with a juvenile one more point the wrestling federation you know how you tee hee ha ha what a joke hoo hoo 1.7 billion dollars in 1990 that's more revenue that has been generated by the nfl so while you're laughing somebody is whistling and allegations of sex being a requirement for job security have even come from wrestling announcers like Murray Hodson. In the main event, the ultimate warrior and Legion of Doom collide with The Undertaker and the Nasty Boys. I was fired in August, mid-August of 91, after I refused a sexual advancement from uh, Vince McMahon's buddy, the vice president of operations. Pat Patterson? Yeah. 
Tell me about that. What happened? We were at an event at the Worcester Arena, and uh, he had come up to me, and uh, he said, so you're the new guy. Uh, what do you taste like? And I was really put back by it. And I told him that he had had the wrong guy. And then he told me candidly that not if I wanted to keep my job with him, I didn't. And he kept his word. Two weeks later, I was fired. What is it that happened to you? I wouldn't sleep with the vice president of operations, so they fired me. About how long did you do the color? Oh, I started for about a month. They hired me for a two-year deal and just went right out the window when I decided that uh, I didn't want to sleep with the vice president. We're trying to be specific here, Murray. As a court of law would oblige uh, any person to be of any gender. It was a little worse than that. He uh, blatantly threatened my job security. Former wrestler Barry Orton also accuses the hierarchy of the WWF of homosexual harassment. Orton implicates two top executives, the former vice president of operations, Pat Patterson, and his former assistant, Terry Garvin, as well as ring announcer Mel Phillips. The talk was on the inside that there were certain people within the organizations that were hiring these kids for one purpose and one purpose only. As far as wrestlers themselves, there, there was always been talk of some up-and-coming, good-looking young wrestlers who, uh, who were put in situations that if they wanted to further their career, if they wanted to advance, if they wanted to climb that ladder, that they would have to cooperate. And, and, and if they did not, then their career would be nowhere. What is your knowledge of the upper management of WWF using their power for sexual favorites? If they saw an opportunity, they would grab it. With the ring assistants, the ring boys, I can remember in Chicago, one of the ring assistants, uh, who was rather young, came up to me and asked me about Terry Garvin and uh, that he was kind of being harassed and asked for my advice on what he should do. I had encounters with uh, two of the gentlemen that have resigned since the allegations began. And uh, these, uh, these uh, incidents, of course, happened in 1978, which is a long time ago. However, the impact and the gravity of the situations are, are very severe. And, you know, if, if they were behaving that way then, and, yeah. uh, you know, they would behave, be behaving that way now, I would expect. Barry, it would be hard for a jury to feel a whole lot of sympathy for a guy of your size, you know what I mean? Uh, a, 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 uh, a helpless woman you're not. When a couple of guys in the game, executive types, come on to you like that and you're 19 years old, you may, you know, you may be a little hesitant to tee him off. Of course. You know, and so I, I endured it for as long as I could until it became, uh, you know, I started feeling suffocated or, uh, you know, uh -huh. and, you, and I couldn't take it anymore. In 1985, in Los Angeles, California, at the University of Hilton Hotel, after the WWF had run a card at the sports arena, uh, I was sitting at a bar with, uh, I guess, can I name these people? Sure, with Pat Patterson, Andre the Giant, Dr. Jerry Graham, and Mike LaBelle. He was the Los Angeles promoter at the time, or a former promoter in Los Angeles. Right. And uh, we sat there drinking maybe for an hour or so. I was talking to Pat. I'd known Pat for maybe six months. I knew he was gay, but, you know, it didn't matter to me if he was gay or not. And I knew he was actually kind of running the shows in L.A. at the time. I don't believe he was in position as the booker yet. And I asked him what was the chance of using me uh, to do jobs, which means you know, I was a loser. So I asked Pat for, you know, if he'd give me a shot or at least a tryout. He said, well, you got two chances, slim and none. He goes, well, there is one way. And he... Want me to come up to the room with him and have oral sex with him. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I'm not interested. Pat had me physically thrown out after that, acted like he didn't know me. Right. What brings you forward now, gentlemen? Actually, I came forward because when Vince said Barry's charges were ridiculous, it was just, I knew it was something that went on in the business, and anybody in this business who really knew about it knew what was going on with Patterson. Mm -hmm. And because it often involves uh, near jobless uh vulnerable young males who wanted to be either in the game or on the card uh... they'd back up and nobody wanted to blow any whistles and i think if i may this also should be said you didn't get a lot of press scrutiny nobody took you seriously anyway mainstream press sports press today doesn't we've never looked the other way in anything and i'm very happy to confront everyone today with whatever allegation they have the three individuals about whom most of these allegations are hurled are no longer with the WWF. We have started an independent investigation on our own to get to the bottom of all of this, and that's why we're here today, is to get to the bottom of it. We may even learn something here today that my investigators do not know.
I want to get to the bottom of it, just like you gentlemen do. Some of dozens of pages of legal documents, allegations, threats, and bluster sent our way in an attempt to scare us off and prevent this investigation from airing. In fairness to the WWF, though, you have to understand their concern. Allegations of teenage sexual abuse certainly can't help business when so much of the audience is comprised of children. Ironically, although they did prevent us from running the Thomas Cole interview, the affidavit filed for that effect by Thomas Cole and his lawyers provides perhaps the best evidence of precisely the kind of abuse this young man experienced. I'll quote from it. The interviews contain graphic descriptions of sexual abuse I sustained between the ages of 13 and 19, most of it between the ages of 13 and 16. This abuse has left me emotionally scarred, end quote. Uh, I'd like to say that it's about time because uh, up until now you've been animate, animately denying that uh, not only that this is taking place, but that uh, and you're saying that you know, knew nothing of it. And, and I just find that really difficult to believe. Why would I condone this kind of activity and risk this alleged kind of revenue. Because Vince, because you are the king of an empire and you have eyes and ears everywhere. And it is so common, at least the topic of conversation for three to five minutes every night in the dressing room, because a lot of the guys, they have to put up with it and they hate it because if they say anything, they're out of a job. I want an organization that everyone can be proud of. I want to get to the bottom of it, just like you do. This happened to me. I tried to call. You know, I called the WWF offices. You were always in a meeting. They took my number, said you'd return my call. Well, you know, you didn't want to talk to me, basically. And I'm sure at the time you didn't know who I was, didn't know what I had to say. But, you know, I tried to explain it to whoever I talked to and I called. And, you know, and, they didn't and want this to... was when, sir? Uh, 1985. you believe that sexual harassment exists in your workplace? I believe that there's a possibility of sexual harassment existing everywhere. And I, I asked directly want... if it was and in the World Wrestling Federation. And I don't want it in my organization. I don't want it. I'd like to reiterate the question. Do you believe... There is sexual harassment amongst the wrestlers or employees at the World Wrestling Federation today. There is a possibility of that. Would you therefore believe that because of all these allegations coming forward and more and more corroborating evidence proving that there's no doubt sexual harassment is running rampant in the World Wrestling Federation, that you are definitely going to come public and do something about it? Why wouldn't I? If in fact that is the case, why wouldn't I do something about it? Why would I risk what we have because you haven't done anything about it until it became public because you thought it because was under the water. I had no knowledge of it. I made knowledge of it to you when I was fired and you just blew it off and let me go. You did a horrible job. That's the only reason why you were fired. That's it. Maybe I should point out first and foremost that might be your inability to uh, pick good talent. It could you be. You had a national Granted. talent search, Vince McMahon. It could be. You advertised in Billboard magazine and across many different media sources searching for one man that could be the new face and voice of the World Wrestling Federation. You flew me in back and forth four and five different times from Detroit and you chose over the course of one year of negotiations that I would be the man for that job. I didn't sleep with your vice president. Two weeks later, I'm fired. I also want to point out one very important fact. From your office came a letter to my landlord to verify my employment. From Can that letter, that? It, I must bring this point up. It says, Murray Hodson has a very secure job with Titan Sports and is a positive and productive employee. From your office, Matthew. just because I don't sleep with your vice president, that qualifies to blow me out of a two-year deal? I don't buy it. Great. If, in fact, these allegations against Pat Patterson, whom you won't name, are true, why not pursue the legal course, the legal recourse? Why not pursue? We are doing that right now. You are. And you are aware that you waited six months after you were let go to bring these homosexual charges against Pat Patterson. Six months you waited. Why? September 14th. If, in fact, you were fired on the spot, if you were fired for incompetence, all right, why didn't you say right then, why didn't you say, hey, look, Vince, your, vi your vice president made a pass at me. You never told me that. No knowledge of it. I made knowledge of it to you when I was fired, and you just blew it off and let me go. Man has gone on record saying that he wasn't aware of any child sex abuse. We have learned that he fired Phil a few years ago because he suspected these activities. He then hired him back. So many different issues here, and the, um, as far as, as far as, like, a, a criminal thing, I think hopefully everybody in this panel wants just the truth to come out. And I don't know what the truth is. I, you know, we all hear different versions of a story, and we just want to hear the truth. Very so good. that's fine. I don't believe it. Referee Mike Clark worked for the WWF for three and a half years. He also learned that his job depended on his sexual availability.
for either you do it or you don't. Here's your job. You want to keep your job, you do it. If you don't want to keep your job, you don't do it. You saw Ring Boys, did you, being sexually harassed? Yes, I, I've seen Ring Boys uh, being sexually harassed. What's a Ring Boy? Uh, uh, Pat, a Ring Boy is a person who's uh, usually employed to put up uh, put up and take down a ring, travel from one town to another. Uh, age group possibly from 13 to 19 to 20 uh, fluctuates anywhere in between. And you saw what? I, I saw on one occasion, in, in, I believe it was in, uh, New Haven, Connecticut, Pat Patterson actually grabbed one of these child, one of these children rather, in the crotch while putting up the ring. I witnessed, I came to the arena a little bit early, walking by the ring to the locker room, and I saw Pat Patterson with his left arm on the kid's shoulder and his right hand in his crotch. I witnessed this for myself. You mentioned a Mal Phillips. He is another of the executives who has resigned. I don't believe he was an actual executive. He was a ring announcer. Was he not? Has he not resigned from the WWF? I believe he has resigned or been fired. I don't know. Former WWF referee Mike Clark says Garvin also approached him in a hotel room. He said, if you want to come to the television tapings, I'll bring you to the next television tapings. And I'll book you across every event in Canada. And I said, geez, that would be great. And he then said to me, he says, well, uh, how would you like to lie on the bed and uh, have me perform oral sex on you? And I'll give you $500. Clark turned Garvin down, but he says there were other approaches. They said to me that you needed a green card to come to the United States to work. And the only way that was feasible was if you became a member of what they call the cream team. Cream team? What is that supposed to mean? Um, Ramsey, does Pat Patterson's cream team really exist? Did you ever see or hear of anyone How joining? How the fuck would we know? The right? cream Let me team. just what cut that. that <laughs> what is? I don't even ever heard of the cream team. All right. If you think ICP has any knowledge of the cream team whatsoever, fuck you. I'll, I just heard of the cream team right now when it came out of Sean Oliver's mouth. Fuck the cream team. Whatever that is, I don't want to even know what it is. Please give no explanation to the cream team. <laughs> I don't want to walk around with that knowledge in my head knowing and what Pat Patterson's right, cream like team Pat is. Pat Patterson too. What the Let's fuck, just man? skip that question all around because I'm just going to pretend I never even heard of the cream team. Then I won't tell you it was the young kids that put up the ring. Ah! Well, this is uh, what they call the the ring crew, the people who set up the rings and the referees throughout the United States that are doing sexual favors for certain bosses in the World Wrestling Federation. The bosses on top of this cream team business were Terry Garvin and Pat Patterson. Yeah, that's another thing. Why are they just now coming up? Let's understand this. You I, I get, can't answer that question. What is it? Um, there's never been a forum for them before. I mean, if you, you have to understand that the um, wrestling business has always been a totally closed entity. It's like almost like an elementary school. You don't snitch. You don't tell. If something happens in the business, yep. there was a friend of mine, okay, and has nothing to do with Vince McMahon, I don't want anyone to think it does, who was murdered in a dressing room. And it was very difficult. This was in Puerto Rico. And it was very difficult for the wrestlers, even in the murder, to go to the police the next day and tell the truth. It took one of the guys who was a friend of the guys, says, we've got to go tell the truth. And there was so much pressure right. on telling that, you know, that you don't snitch. They were the main two the main two culprits with this cream team, the whole issue of hiring youngsters due to getting sexual favors. Clark also named Mel Phillips, calling him the sickest of the three. I was there the night in Allentown, Pennsylvania, when Mel Phillips was caught in the front seat of a car with a child approximately 10 years old performing, performing oral sexual, yeah. Uh, yeah, perform no. on this child of 10 years old, brought into the arena by a security guard, confronted to Mr. McMahon, Vince Sr. and Vince Jr., and they said we would handle it. Here's the question. Did the WWF, or did the environment, or did people in power not only look the other way, but actually condone the loss of jobs, the loss of employment, because of bold, bold, unrestrained aggression of a sexual nature by men in power on younger men who wanted to uh, rise within the system? Absolutely That's not. the question. Let me give you a better example to apply to this, because I'm not accusing Pat Patterson of anything. Well, you said you were willing to participate in the business was hard. Business was hard. Yeah. I'm in the dressing room in Kansas City, and I, I come up in the dressing room, and it'd just be me. Like, I'm just living with a, with a pit bull in a vega with a tent and a, you know, a little cooler thing going on. And so I'm like, I'm early. I got nothing to do. I come in, and in the can... Ha ha, the door's open, there's uh, Ken Ramsey jacking off, you know. And I, and I guess, you know, it's supposed to be a joke, you know, but I, 
I'm the only guy here. <laughs> ah, whatever, you know. And then, like, Lord Alfred Hayes, you know. Fuck. Oh, you'll never be able to air this anyway. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, geez. Uh, Alfred Hayes, it's true stories, man. Alfred Hayes would, he had a big schwanz on I'd say he's hung like a fucking elf. Yeah, oh, man. oh, yeah. And he would, he would go, and he'd get it running like this, and he'd run around, literally going, Raw day! Raw day! And, you know, it's like, oh, dude, come on. Get that shit. Well, fine, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, but, like, I got nowhere to go. I'm How much ripping was there like this? With Every day. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you just that. Nothing yet, man. Well, is it true that you were quoted as saying when you were trying to help out Jim Powers or something, they should call your place World Wrestling Faggots, Vince? Yeah, that's true. Worldwide Faggots. Worldwide Faggots, yeah. Boy, that got out, did it? Uh, we could hear things. <laughs> <laughs> that was in the uh, Blackwall thing. Right. Yeah, Worldwide Faggots. Actually, yeah. But you yeah, could say, you I cut that part out a little bit for I, I me? Said, I said. There is no question Vince not only knew what was going on, but it certainly wouldn't be a surprise or any shock that he was involved himself. Do you see Mr. McMahon coming uh, uh, coming forward here to uh, open the door, at least, to the possibility here? Do, are you impressed with what he has said here in the first part of our program? It, it, it surprises me, and I'm, I'm glad he said it. because um, You're glad he said what? I'm glad he admitted that there was a possibility, because none of us know for sure. Maybe, maybe Barry does, okay? Um, and uh, Murray and Tom, okay? I don't know for sure. It's one person's word against another. And maybe if the executives told Vince that this didn't happen, maybe they were telling the truth and maybe they're not. I can't tell you for sure, although I will say this, I do believe Barry's story. Um, he took a polygraph and I've spent a lot of time discussing it with him and I think that I'm pretty decent at uh, talking to wrestlers and, and separating the fact from the fiction and I believe Barry's story. Sir, say that the big, what the big story really was, was not, was not really the story where I sat between uh, Pat Patterson and Terry Garvin, but shortly thereafter, there was another instance, and I remember I'm 19 years old, and I drove from Amarillo to Albuquerque, New Mexico, with a single passenger being Terry Garvin, who about 40 miles outside of town started uh, proposing that he perform oral sex on me while I was driving, begging me to let me to let him do so and of course because I was young I didn't want to lose a position or a shot and I don't have homophobia I have no problem with you know I'm, I'm a First Amendment person I believe everyone has a right to do whatever they want to do right. uh, and 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 I told him as nicely as I could please don't be offended but that's not you know what I'm into and and nothing personal and you know I'm still your friend but no thanks and he did this uh, every 40 or 50 miles, he would start again, and, he, and, and, and it got harder and harder to talk about. That happened, and that's horrible, but that happened. Well, let him finish his point. And your but point, Barry, is... My point is, is that uh, Dave, Dave Meltzer just said, I have taken a polygraph about all this right. stuff and, and but, came back totally clean. My point is, is that if he was attracted to young men... And, and, and younger, because I even heard the stories of the uh, kids underage back then. His behavior then, towards you makes him wa makes you wonder about how he may behave toward others. The very first day I went to work full time for the WWF back in '87, my boss told me, "You know about Pat Patterson and Terry Garvin. You ever have a problem, come to me." He said to me, "So if he knew, and everybody else knows, Vince McMahon isn't going to know." What was I telling you about? Well, we. Covered a few things. Covered just the Lord Hayes's cop. Okay, yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Okay. Just want to see if you listen. Oh, okay. So now, Bob Geigel, who was the president of mm -hmm. the NWA, Mr. Fucking Geigel, mm -hmm. wants to talk to Rod. Like the guy at the door doesn't even want to talk. He doesn't even believe I'm a wrestler. You know how honest I am. I'll do push-ups. Fucking a. So, I am thrilled. And. There's Mr. Geigel, and like behind is uh, all the lockers. They're little stalls, 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 stalls. You know, I have one, whatever. And there was a massage table, like right here. I'll just do it from here for convenience. But I'm listening to Mr. Geigel saying anything, you know. You know, Mary Poppins. Yes, yes, sir. I'm Mary. I am Mary. You know. And I'm listening. I got my hand here, and I'm listening. And while I'm listening, I, I don't know, something's wrong. I'm listening to Mr. Geigel, but it's Mr. Geigel, so 
I got to figure out the wrong thing later. Right now, I got me. But he's not saying anything. One tackle. What was it, sir? Yeah, Roddy. Yeah, Piper. No, R O D. What is that in my fucking hand? And I turn, and it's Lord Elfish Hayes' dick. Not funny. <laughs> Not for you. And I, I turned around, and my face was red, and there was nobody in the place I could beat up. Where were you all these years? Was the money so good? Was the glamour so great? Was the business exploding so wonderfully that you didn't have time to get into uh, this kind of thing, and you looked the other way and allowed it to happen? That seems to be... The way, the way this charge is evolving against you. Well, I certainly didn't look the other way. There was no reason for me to look the other way and risk everything that we have going on. You didn't know any very... of this was going on, Mr. McMahon? No, I did not. It could very well have happened. And to that extent, if in fact it did happen, again, those individuals whom these allegations are being brought against are no longer with me. According to this press release, their resignations were not solicited and were accepted by the organization at their insistence. These resignations were made in an extraordinary show of loyalty by these employees to the company. Pat Patterson, Terry Garvin, and a few others, or I'm not sure exactly who they were, resigned from their actual posts at the World Wrestling Federation, who had been there for a number of years. That reeks of guilt. Sources tell now they've heard both Garvin and Patterson say they are still working for the WWF, that the resignations are just for show. Were you forced to? No, no, my fuck that. No. That's just, uh. It's a hard business.